Treasury yields saw some of their biggest weekly gains since 2022 this past week. What happened? Hello, members, Super Savers, and Bond Course fans. I hope you're healthy and well. It's been another wild week for Treasury investors. So let's get right into it. Here are the three topics that we'll be covering in today's update video. One, why did Treasury yields skyrocket this past week? Friday in particular was a blowout day for Treasury yields. Two, how high did Treasury yields end this past week? And three, what's on the upcoming Treasury auction schedule? And where can you find the best opportunities with new issue agencies, corporates, and brokered CDs now? I know that quite a few of our YouTube members and bond course folks are interested in the upcoming week's treasury note and bond auctions. If this is you, we'll be talking about them in a little more detail in the last section of today's video, as promised. As usual, here's our front of video disclaimer. For a detailed disclaimer, please refer to the end of this video. Let's dive in now, folks. Here's the news that drove the Treasury yield roller coaster this past week. First up, then down, and then up again. The only thing missing was a full loop the loop. It all started on Monday, September 30th, when Fed Governor Powell said that the FOMC was not in a hurry to cut rates. Treasury yields promptly moved up across nearly all maturities. On Tuesday, October 1st, Iran launched a retaliatory missile attack on Israel. Investors' flight to safety drove longer-dated Treasury yields down, with the 10-year T-note yield hitting its lowest point in a week. On Wednesday, October 2nd, inflation worries resurfaced as oil prices rose amidst trouble in the Middle East. Plus, a private sector job report showed continued economic growth with more job additions than expected. This drove longer-dated Treasury yields back up. On Thursday, October 3rd, a positive outlook on economic growth was further supported by a report from the Institute for Supply Management, which showed that the U.S. service sector grew at the fastest pace in about 18 months. Treasury yields shot upwards across all maturities. Finally, on Friday, October 4th, the Bureau of Labor Statistics reported a blowout jobs report with 254,000 jobs added in September versus market expectations of around 150,000. Wages also increased at a good pace. Treasury yields soared even higher, with some maturities up more than 20 basis points. Now, jobs numbers are subject to revision, as we've seen in the past. But taken as a whole, the economic data released this past week basically showed that our economy is still going strong and that the Fed may not have to do another jumbo rate cut this year. Pretty much confirming Powell's stance on not being in a rush to lower rates, and also supporting the hope for the soft landing scenario we discussed in these last two videos. Link below in the first pinned comment for your convenience. If the economy stays resilient and the Fed does not have to bring down rates rapidly, then rates on the short end could stay at what I call elevated levels for longer than expected. And in the best case scenario for the bond buyers in our community, slower, smaller Fed rate cuts coupled with stable economic growth, a soft landing, could even have the effect of pushing rates on the long end higher, as we've seen already this week. Remember though, bond yields move up and down all the time, as we also talk about a lot on this channel especially now as the market tries to predict the Fed's next big move. So if you are interested in adding more fixed income to your portfolio, especially on the longer end, my general recommendation continues to be dollar cost averaging in regular intervals that work for your situation. Plus, of course, yields up always means prices down in the universe of bonds. So your personal outlook may depend on whether you're thinking more about buying new bonds with higher yields versus the price of the bonds you already own, which will have gone down last week as yields rose. For example, if you own TLT, the iShares 20 plus year treasury bond ETF, you will have seen it go down in price over the past week. As I always say, everyone's financial journey is different. So with that in mind, let's move on to the next section of this video and see which treasuries had the biggest bump upwards. 
So let's see where we stand at the end of this big week in the bond market and compare Treasury yields from this past Friday versus the previous week. Here we have all the maturities that the Treasury issues at auction. Here's where yields stood this past Friday, and here's where yields stood at the end of the previous week. As we already covered in the first part of today's video, Treasury yields were up across the board with the one-year, two-year, three-year, and five-year seeing the biggest weekly gains in the 30 basis points range. The two-year was even up a whopping 38 basis points. In fact, the two-year and three-year skyrocketed more than 20 basis points on Friday alone after that much stronger-than-expected jobs report, which counts as a small earthquake in Bondland. This was also the highest closing levels for the 10-year and the 30-year since the beginning of August, and the first time in more than two weeks that the one-month T-bill crossed 5% again. Now, let's take a look at Treasury yields from this past Friday versus the beginning of this year. This row shows where rates ended this past Friday. This row shows where rates were on January 2nd. And this row shows the increase or decrease in rates since the beginning of this year to the time of this taping. Increases in rates are shown in black and decreases in rates are shown in red. Treasury yields across all short and medium maturities are still noticeably lower than where they were at the start of the year, but the difference has narrowed this week. The 10-year, 20-year, and 30-year, though, they've all re-entered positive territory this week and are now above where they started the year, with the biggest increase to be seen in the 30-year. You can find more details on these rates for any day of the week that the bond market is open on the Treasury's Daily Treasury Par Yield Curve Rates page. All sources are linked below in the first pinned comment. Do keep in mind that this overview gives you a general feeling for where rates currently stand along the maturity spectrum, the yields that you may get when you buy at a specific auction or from a specific broker, or when you sell, will likely differ a little bit from what's shown here. Now that we've covered Treasury yields from this past week, let's move on to the next section of this video, especially for those of you who are interested in agencies, corporates, and brokered CDs as well. Here we are at Treasury Direct's upcoming auctions page. If we scroll down, we can see that all the weekly T-bill and CMB auctions are happening as usual. And if we scroll down further, we can see the 3-year T-note, the 10-year T-note, and the 30-year T-bond will be auctioned off as well this upcoming week. The 3-year T-note is not a reopening auction, so the coupon still remains to be determined on auction day. The 10-year T-note and the 30-year T-bond are reopening auctions, so we already know what the coupon will be on those. At the time of this taping, here's what the coupon and the expected yield are for the three-year T-note auction on Fidelity's platform. And here's what the coupon and the expected yield are for the 10-year T-note auction. And here's what the coupon and the expected yield are for the 30-year T-bond auction. Do keep in mind that all of these numbers can and usually do change all the way up to the time of the auction. And as a point of reference for those of you considering the upcoming week's T-note and or T-bond auctions, here is a chart showing the historical yield for the 3-year T-note, the 10-year T-note, and the 30-year T-bond dating back 10 years. While yields may not be as high as they were at some points earlier this year, they are still quite attractive in comparison to some of their historical levels, as you can see here. So, do keep this in mind as you decide for yourself whether you should pick some up this coming week or not. As I mentioned earlier in this video, given the current volatility in the bond market, my general recommendation continues to be dollar cost averaging in regular intervals that work for your situation. Now, for those of you who may be interested in other types of bonds and CDs for a bit of a higher yield, here's where the highest yielding new issue agency bonds stand at the time of this taping. For corporate bonds, here's where the highest yielding new issues stand at the moment. And yes, there are a lot more to choose from this week after the slim pickings from last week. For brokered CDs, here's where the highest yielding new issues are currently. Remember that regardless of whether we're talking about agency bonds, corporate bonds, or brokered CDs, currently the higher yielding ones that are a bit further out in terms of maturity 
are generally callable. So be sure to check what the first call date might be on those because some of them may be shorter or longer than you might expect. All right, members, Super Savers and Bond Course fans, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. And if you want to really get up to speed on bond investing and building out your bond portfolio while rates are still attractive, then check out this video here on our 2024 bond courses. Or come join our next live sessions. Our next live Bond Beginners course session will be on Friday, October 18th at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, 2 p.m. Pacific Time, where we'll be talking about the 20-year T-Bond and 5-year tips auctions. And our next live YouTube member Q&A will be on Sunday, October 27th at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, 2 p.m. Pacific Time, where we'll be discussing the 2, 5, and 7-year T-Note auctions. I've also linked all the details on our bond courses and YouTube Super Super Saver membership below this video for your convenience. Good luck to everyone who's planning on picking up some bonds and CDs this coming week. And see you again very soon with more brand new wealth building content for your financial journey.